Well, it has been a quiet week in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Nothing's working. Not even the air. The federal government has been shut down for so long that those people who couldn't afford to miss one paycheck have now missed two. And that's when the real panic sets in. You miss one paycheck and you scramble for whatever threads you still have. Miss two? The threads are bare. The grocery store is empty. There's a line at the bank, but mostly for closing accounts. And more and more, the look you see on people's faces is a look of ashen gray, of dread, of a dismal future that waits for us every morning. And we wonder, what's next? Sherry Finn spends most of her morning in her room, watching reruns of Judge Judy on a TV so small it really should have been a computer monitor. From across the room, Judge Judy looked like a tiny little head far, far away. But that didn't bother Sherry all that much because she wasn't really watching the TV, more like listening to it. She had a stack of papers on the other side of the bed, which mostly served as a reminder of being alone. Those papers could have been a man. They could have been Idris Elba. She didn't care if the shade was wrong. They could have also been a woman, like Selma Hayek, eh, a little old, or Penelope Cruz, or even Ariana Grande. Sherry had no interest in women sexually, but she had even less interest in those stacks of paper. Those stacks of paper Sherry was passively refusing to look at had been handed to her by bartender Bob three nights ago. Inventory invoices and payroll records, leasing agreements, an endless list of expenses Sherry couldn't pay because nobody was coming into the bar to drink, not even Brett Kavanaugh. On that night, three nights ago, Sherry had insisted something had to change. Freedom Fried had to drum up business, cut costs, cut the fat, but not cut any of the employees. Not Bob, not Sylvia, not Tonin, not even the cleaning crew. Sherry didn't know their names. They were sent by a service. They weren't even the same people each week. It was cheaper than paying someone, and Sherry had already fired that someone when she found out how much cheaper the service was. But Sherry didn't touch any of those papers, hadn't touched them since the morning when she brought them home. Because she knew that there were no easy cuts. And what is a bar without servers but one guy yelling at you from across an empty room? Want a drink? drink? Sherry was never supposed to be in this position. She heard a knock coming from outside her room and a pubescent voice beckon, Sherry! She considered telling him to go away, except she had already told him that several times. Instead, she muttered, Shit! And shouted, Come in! Museum, Sherry! Her nephew Sean told her as he charged into the room. The museum! Yeah, yeah, Sherry said, 
her head burrowed halfway beneath a pillow. Sean had to go to a museum, something for school, and he wanted Sherry to take him there. But what did Sherry know about museums? She was supposed to be the cool aunt who gave advice about getting girls. That's what Sherry was equipped for. If Sean had any idea how many trips to however many museums Sherry had skipped out on in her day, he would have been very disappointed. So, Sherry asked, When do you need this by? Monday, Sean told her. I need to hand in my report by Monday. And today is Thursday. Sean had been bothering Sherry about this since last Friday. Clearly, time was running out. Why can't you go? Sherry asked him. Take an Uber. There's plenty of those. The theme is reflections on history. We're supposed to pick a museum and film our immediate impressions on no fewer than three displays. Then I'm supposed to research the display and discover how our impressions differ and or complement the original intent or design of... Oh my God, how do you know all of this? Sean held up his phone, off of which he was reading his assignment. Sherry dismissed. Oh, well, that's cheating. I need to get started on this, Sherry. I've been hearing that everything's shut. What if we can't even find a museum? We'll find a museum, Sean. It's, it's, it's probably better to wait until the weekend anyway. Sherry waited for Sean's response, but no response came. Sherry figured that she'd won. Her reward would be two full days without... Sean lifted Sherry's pillow from her head. The Smithsonian is closed. All the Smithsonians are closed. Because of the shutdown? Yes, Sean told her in that exasperating way teenagers have. Sherry thought for a second, trying to remember a museum that didn't have the name Smithsonian in it. Actually, for a second... Probably too flattering. But after about 15 minutes, she said, What about the Holocaust Museum? Sean tapped something on his phone and told her, Closed. Closed? They closed the Holocaust Museum? Sean didn't reply. He just turned his phone to her. Sherry took the phone and scrolled through the list. The National Gallery, the Sculpture Garden, the Ford's Theater. Sherry kept scrolling and kept scrolling, and the list kept growing. And Sherry saw this as a list of everything that was wrong with her life. She wanted to stage a march as big as the Women's March, which, by the way, did not pass anywhere near Georgetown, but would have brought in a ton of money. Sherry still fantasized about that. She wanted a march for everything that had been taken away, everything that Cheeto-dicked homunculus in the White House had stolen from them, starting with her country, and not ending until at least... She had a bigger TV. And from somewhere deep inside her dream of a better life, where everything was returned to normal, Sherry found an inspiration. Beside one of the many names for the Smithsonian's, she saw a link for a virtual tour. Of course, she thought. If we can't have real museums in a real world, or even real presidents in a real Washington, they would happily settle for the nearest cheap knockoff. 
She turned the phone back to her nephew and gave him a wink. Then she clicked the link for the virtual tour and sighed a sigh of relief, readying herself for an easy substitute for... But the link was down. So much for virtual reality. And that's it from DC, as with the rest of the world. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place. This is Ken LaSalle, and I just wanted to thank you for stopping by for this episode of DC Home. For more information about myself and the work I do, I invite you to take a look at my website at kenlasall.com. You can also find my work on Amazon, Audible, iTunes, and anywhere you find books and audiobooks available online. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube by searching my name, Ken LaSall. And thank you, as always for your support.